Hey guys, I'm Elliot. This is Everything Elliot. Today we're gonna to be working on my Kubota L4701. Now I'll be honest with you, there is a fluid that I didn't change in this machine, and that is the front axle fluid. Mainly because I forgot. When I drove out to the dealership this morning to get fluids, I said to myself, eh, transmission, what more do I need? I totally forgot about the front axle. So in a coming video, I'll show you guys how to do that one. Just kidding. I ran to the dealership, got some more Super UDT. We're gonna do the front axle oil right in this video, right here, right now. So uh, in my specific tractor, the L4701, it requires, I believe, uh, almost seven quarts of Super UDT2. Same thing you put in the transmission. If you have the smaller L series, I believe they take a different size uh, or different quantity of oil, but they all run the Super UDT2. The dealership said you could run gear oil in the front, but uh, since Kubota calls for Super UDT2, and it's about the same price to be honest with you, um, I'm just gonna run the Super UDT. A couple things you'll need, uh, the drain pan again, you'll need that, we're gonna be draining the old oil. You're gonna need some wrenches. Uh, I don't know what size yet, but we'll figure that out together. And you need to get to the inside of the tire. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fire up the machine and uh, we'll turn the tire all the way to, I don't know, the left. We'll start on this side first. So we need to move down into the axle area. The first thing we're gonna do though is we're gonna go over to the fill plug and we'll take the fill plug out. That way the case can vent and the oil will come out faster. So the fill plug on this tractor is going to be on what is the driver's side of the tractor. It's gonna be right on the top of the axle over here. It's this one right here. Uh, on my tractor, it is inch and a sixteenth, which is about equivalent to 27 millimeters. So we'll pull that off. Nice and easy. Again, we're just doing this first so the uh, axle can breathe and the oil will uh, drain out a little faster. There we go, she's out. So we are just gonna leave this, uh, you know what? Let's put it somewhere we're not gonna lose it. What on top of this chair? All right, it's on top of the chair. And then we're gonna go back over to the, uh, the other side because that's the way that I got the wheel turned. We'll start draining that side first. So once you're over here on this side, we've got the bolt that is on the axle housing. This is gonna be the drain plug right here. This is a 14 mil. And the way I've got this kind of rigged up is we've got a funnel here below it, and then that's going into a drain pan. I mean, if you take the wheel off, you can get a drain pan right underneath it, but I don't want to monkey with that, so we're going to do it with the wheel on. Oh, and we missed. Nothing like spilling a little bit of gear oil on the ground, huh? All right, so I guess prepare yourself for that. We'll let this drain for a while and then uh, we'll go do the other side, drain the other side as well. We're about like, uh, I don't know, 10 minutes and it's, it's still going. Certainly not as strong as it was, but you can see on the camera there that there is still a flow. At least I hope you can see that. Guess I'll go get a beer and uh, wait for this to finish. So when I come back, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take these tires, we're gonna rotate them the other way and do the same exact thing on the opposite side. So we're over here on the, uh, what would be driver's side. Uh, we're gonna do the same exact thing. This time I'm gonna be a little more attentive with the funnel when it first comes out. There's not gonna be as much that comes out on this side because obviously we already drained half of it, but there will still be some that comes out. I'm hoping there's not a big gush like there was last time. But we'll be ready this time, I hope. I say that and I'm probably gonna spill gear oil all over the place again. But we'll see, here we go. Yep, and we did it again. So the last side took about uh, 20 minutes to drain to be honest with you. It was, uh, it was something. So we're gonna let this drain too. 
probably take another 20 minutes, hopefully not, but we'll let it drain and then uh, when we come back we're going to fill it up. I'll show you guys the proper way to fill it up. And even if you don't have this machine that exactly takes the 6.9 quarts, you don't really need to know because there's a, there's a level indicator. I'll show you where that is. All right, so now that this side is uh, done draining, it went much faster than the last side. Obviously, there's not as much oil in it. We're gonna put this uh, drain plug back in, tighten that down, and then what we'll do is we're gonna open up the fill port. Well, the fill port's already open. What we're gonna open up is the, uh, the I guess you'd call it maybe like the overflow port. Oh, slipped off. And that is right behind the fill port. It's right here. So you've got your fill port right here and your overflow or level port. It's gonna be right there. I'm hoping that it's 14, just like the rest of them. And it is. Get that loosened. Take that off. Get that piece of grass out of there. All right, set that aside. So now what we need to do is I'm gonna grab a funnel and we'll put a funnel in here and basically fill it until it starts coming out of here. Put that bolt back in and voila, we're done. So since there is gonna be some oil spilling out of it, I'll put this drain pan underneath it. I'm gonna grab a funnel, not this bent one, and we'll fill it up. So I've got this nice long funnel that should fit right in there and it should make it somewhat easy to pour the oil in. Now I'm gonna have to pour it up here above the, uh, above the loader arm, but I guess you didn't have your loader on. Be a little easier. Oh, dinner's done. No rush to come in. It's got to cool down anyway and stay super hot for a while. It's pot pie. I love pot pie. Michelle made pot pie. Anywho, she said it's got to cool down for a little bit, so we'll pour some oil in. Again, it takes like 6.9 or something like that, so I know it's got to take more than this. All right, there's that. We'll go get the big one that I just bought today. Now this might prove to be a little more difficult to pour. We'll find out, won't we? Oh, it fits in between. Whoa, 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 whoa. I know that wasn't six quarts yet, but it is flowing out of the thing. I think it's because I was pouring it too fast not giving it a chance to uh, go to both sides. I can hear something bubbling in there, so maybe it's working its way down the other side of the axle. Um, I'll leave it for a while, I'll go eat dinner, and then uh, once I come back from dinner, we'll finish filling it up, see what's really going on. All right, so a belly full of chicken pot pie really, really would change your outlook on life, man. I know they say chicken noodle soup is uh, good for the soul, but man, whoever wrote that never had pot pie. Anywho, uh, we're going to throw some more oil on this and see if it comes out of that uh, port down there. And hopefully Kubota didn't lie about how much it takes. Yeah, it's coming right out. It's a lot less than I thought it was going to take. Well, I guess... Uh, I guess we'll put this drain plug back in here, this fill plug, whatever kind of plug you want to call it. Tighten that back up. And what I'll do is, uh, after I run it the first time, I gotta check the fluids anyway. I gotta run it and check the transmission fluid, make sure that's all up to snuff, and I gotta run it and check this fluid. So. First time I run it, I'll do this all over again, just to confirm that it's at the right height. But that's how you change the, uh, the axle fluid in the L-Series tractor.